January, more than 700 manatees have died in Florida, nearly as many as the past three years combined. The massive die offs on the East Coast now being investigated as an unusual mortality event caused by an algae bloom in the Indian River Lagoon. In this in depth full circle special report, ABC Action News reporter Michael Paluska crisscrossed the state with scientists on land and see, seeing firsthand the deadly encounters more and more manatees are facing. And the question here tonight that experts are racing to answer, can we save the Florida manatee in time? Scientists tell me that everything we do on land and here in the water has a direct impact on marine life, and we're seeing the deadly consequences of our actions. Since the beginning of the year, more than 700 manatees have been found dead and counting. Doing this report, I fell in love with this animal and the people fighting to save them. I hope you do too, and I have to warn you that some of the images you're going to see are heartbreaking. Oh, this is catastrophic. Manatees are literally starving to death. This population can't sustain that going forward. So we have passed the point of recovery if we don't do something much more serious to get this under control. Sadly, we're seeing the deaths of the manatees, but they're like the giant, you know, gray canary in the coal mine. The work has to continue, and it can be hard because some days it feels like you're not making any headway. Storms in the distance. But the water Jen Galbraith is searching, calm, just like her. This is a whole new world to them coming out here. Twice a week, most often alone, she hunts. I'm the ultimate manatee stalker. A satellite tracker attached to a manatee named Opal gets Galbraith to the general area. Loud? Near? Far. <laughs> Near? <laughs> Far. A VHF transmitter, similar to how you tune into your favorite radio station, does the rest. When a manatee pulls the tracker underwater, that signal dies. It's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. It is, and the haystack can swim. <laughs> <laughs> Close. And I see her. All right, what I saw isn't there anymore, so... In the wild, a short snout with two flaring nostrils are the first glimpses of the gentle giant below. We got to see manatees in a way most people never will. I feel like it's closing up around me. Out of the water, the scars of humanity displayed for all to see, each mark from a boat strike, flippers maimed by entanglements from fishing lines and oftentimes crab traps. Wildlife rehab is really heartbreaking. Dr. Lauren Smith is the director of animal health at Zoo Tampa, the only critical care facility for manatees on the Gulf Coast. Is that a feeding tube? Yeah, so right now they're passing what's called a nasogastric tube. So we go in through the nares and that will end up in her stomach. And so that's how we provide um, some fluids. The medical team here at Zoo Tampa has been extremely busy taking care of manatees. This one came in for cold stress syndrome and they've been treating other manatees because of red tide and also lack of food source. So they're getting starved in the wild. The medical pools at capacity, veterinarians nursing the sickest manatees back to health. Here is the before and after of a manatee suffering from cold stress. And no one thought this manatee, Bellissima, would make it. Emaciated, both flippers with deep wounds to the bone, but the team pulled off a miraculous recovery. She made it, and what an amazing transformation. We watched as the team continued to care for her, and when she's ready, return her to the wild. These animals are fighters. We're really fortunate that they can survive with some supportive care. We're gonna do a little princess carry. Their youngest patient, Calliope, an orphaned baby calf that came in a few weeks ago. Go ahead and start putting the other ends on. Each rehabbed animal, a small victory in an endless war. For all these people that were passing on the road, they have no clue that in this giant box truck we're in right now is a manatee, more than a thousand pounds named Darling, that we're taking down to the Fort Myers area. 
It was quite an experience riding with Darling. Every time she shifted her weight, the whole truck rocked back and forth. For the entire two and a half hour ride, the dedicated team kept Darling cool and comfortable, even though she did try and stick her nose in the cab a couple times. We're just gonna do one more strap in and then I think we're good. One, two, three. Darling's original rescuers there to greet her on Pine Island and wish her good luck. Bye -bye, darling. And at the same time, I watched Darling return to the wild. The nonprofit Save the Manatee Club filmed this release for us at Blue Spring State Park. Releases happening across the state. This manatee, Greedy Bee, was rescued in February, suffering from cold stress syndrome. Before she hit the water, she got outfitted with a satellite tracker. I just want to make sure it's tight. Monica Ross, a senior research scientist at Clearwater Marine Aquarium, is now tasked with tracking her. Ross wants to know where Greedy Bee goes and if she'll head north. So what we're wondering is, with the increase in um, need for finding vegetation that we might have more animals moving outside of Florida to find that food now. It's another dragon, Greedy Bee, more than a thousand pounds into the St. Johns River. It is tough. Months of rehab, hopefully translating into years of research in the wild, if Greedy Bee can make it. I want her to bring her head up for breath. Look at her tail, she's gone. Hi, I really hope that she will be safe out there, stay in the shallows that are away from the boat areas and feed and, and hopefully do well next winter. The manatee seems like a really difficult animal to rescue and they're one of the animals that need rescuing the most. Well, they and they're of course the most gentle animal. Patrick Rose is the executive director of the Save the Manatee Club. But it takes literally hundreds and hundreds of people to help offset what the, the tens of thousands, if not millions of people are doing wrong. He says algae blooms made worse by our pollution creates death zones for aquatic systems. The lighter areas in this satellite photo of the Indian River Lagoon used to be seagrass, it's now barren. It used to be the feeding grounds for manatees that they would return to year after year, but it's been replaced by an underwater desert. Nature can only absorb so much before it passes a tipping point. They could live over 60 years, but they're actually dying. Some are around 12 to 15 years old. They're not even being allowed to live out their normal lifespan on average. Rose calls this year's death count apocalyptic. The numbers on a page don't tell the whole story. And if you are squeamish, look away. This is the sad truth of what's happening in our state. Manatees found starved, decomposed, some mangled by boats, others paralyzed by the toxins from red tide drowned, too weak to get their snouts above water. That's where we're at. We could lose more than a thousand manatees this year alone, and we could be facing next winter being worse than this winter. I always come out here expecting to find them dead. Two manatees Galbraith was tracking earlier this year have already died. So mentally, she always prepares for the worst. Something right there to the right. OK, well, that thing doesn't help me. What are you talking about? Yep, that's her. Where do you see it? That tiny little thing? Yeah. Oh, is that a boy? After nearly an hour scouring the water, my photographer, Reed Moeller, spotted the tracker. We need to determine that there's a manatee attached to that, it's alive, um, and then that it's doing okay. Then we got proof of life. There she is, okay. that's her. There's, an, there's a nose there. You hear that? After a fleeting moment of relief, the hard work begins. What I'm gonna watch for, and actually you guys can help me, you can be useful. Um, <laughs> not that I like not. to be useful. Okay, um, while I'm taking this data, if you wanna keep eyes on her, I want to know if there's other manatees around. What Galbraith writes in this book is priceless data that will help scientists today and tomorrow and in the future save this threatened species. We know what a bad day is. What's a good day? A good day is when you find them. <laughs> they're eating, they're swimming, they're in good habitat. You don't see people racing over them in boats. Then you go home and you can sleep at night knowing they're okay for that day. But then. Tomorrow's a whole new day, and you don't know what's going to happen then. In Tampa, Michael Paluska, ABC Action News.